Paper one in your IB chem test is going to be a multiple choice, 40 multiple choice questions for HL. So what I've done here is I've taken some previous exams and as I've gone through, I've noticed that there are some trends on typical questions. So I've designed seven questions that are like common IB multiple choice questions that I want to go through and show you how to answer and how to figure out. So our first type of question is, we have a bunch of reactions and which one is this particular element being oxidized or reduced? Okay. Now for oxidation is a little trickier than reduction. So let's start with reduction. Reducing means that our oxidation number is going to go down, it's being reduced, which includes negatives. So if we're going from zero to negative, or positive to zero, or positive to negative, that's reduction. So oxidation can often be thought of as the number it has to be going up, it's the opposite of reduction. You can also think of this as adding and subtracting oxygen. Okay? So if we look at the first one here, if we assign oxidation states, we have minus two for oxygen, and we have three of those which is minus six total. So the sulfur here needs to be plus six in oxidation state. Here we have minus two, but we only have two of them. So the sulfur only needs to be plus four to balance that out to be zero. So our oxidation number is going down, the sulfur there is being reduced, okay? Now, we could also have thought of this as the sulfur is losing oxygen. So anytime you lose oxygen or gain hydrogen, that's gonna be a reduction. In B, we're looking at the thiosulfate, and this looks complicated. So maybe let's table this one and come back to it later. So here we have calcium sulfate and sulfur trioxide. So if we look, we have minus two, plus two. And so we've got minus eight and plus two, this needs to be plus six, to add up to be plus eight here to cancel the minus eight there. Here we've got minus two. We actually already figured this out over here, so we know that plus six there as well. So in that case, the sulfur doesn't change. That's not a redox reaction, that's an acid base. Here we've got minus two from the plus one of the hydrogens, and this is plus two and minus two. So again, we're not seeing any redox in either one of those. So we know that those are not the answer, which would put B as probably the answer. All right, to figure B out is challenging because you start with two sulfurs and three oxygens, you end with four and six. The charge is constant, meaning there is a reduction or oxidation going on here. There's two good ways to do this. There's, you can assign oxidation states, or you can look at the other element. So an iodine turning into iodide, it's going from zero to minus one. That means that the iodine is reduced. Well, that means that something has to be oxidized then. So the sulfur then is our, is our case. Now let's confirm that by doing oxidation states. So we have negative two times three is negative six. So we need the total to add up to be two minus. So we need this to be plus four total, or plus two for each sulfur. So plus two for each sulfur, minus two for each oxygen, adds up to the two minus total charge. Over here, we've got minus two, which is a total of negative 12 for all six oxygens. We need it to add up to two minus, so this is gonna be plus 10. Okay, well, if we divide that up by the four, on average, we're looking at a plus 2.5. And so we can see that the sulfur oxidation state on average goes up by a 0.5 per sulfur. So therefore, B would be our choice here. So oxidation numbers is the complete way to do it. You can also look at oxygen and hydrogen moving around, um, but that's what you want to do to confirm your final answer. All right, second question is, which mu mixture would form a buffer? So to form a buffer, you need to have a weak acid and you need to have a conjugate base. And the idea is that this can react with strong base, this can react with strong acid, so that your pH is somewhat maintained within a certain range. There are three ways to form this. You can actually mix these two together. You can mix together some weak acid and strong base where there is an excess of the weak acid, or you can mix together an excess of weak base and strong acid. What's gonna happen here is the OH- is gonna react with this to make A-, minus, but you'll have some of this left over, so in the end you end up with some of this. And what happens here is that H plus reacts with A minus to form HA, but you have some excess of this. Okay, so if we go ahead and look here, sodium hydroxide is a strong base, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And so this is clearly not the answer that's not going to form a bubble. Okay, here we're looking at a weak acid plus a strong base. So that's a possibility. We have to look at our numbers. And we have a strong base plus a weak acid, and it looks like that's repeating all the way through the problem. 
Okay, so all three of these are options, but now what we want is we want the weak component to be in excess so that it's left over to be present with the conjugate base. So we want to have the one that's in excess of this. Okay, now it looks like I forgot to put the concentrations in. So these were all supposed to be 0.01 molar. Sorry about that. Same as the uh, other one, because we don't have a calculator here. So in that case, we're looking for the one with excess. Well, this one, we have an excess of hydroxide. That's not going to be the answer. And in this one, we have equal amounts of both. Now, many people will be drawn towards this because if you have equal amounts of weak acid and conjugate base, that's the, that's the um, half equivalence point on a titration curve. That's where you have the best buffer. However, this is not going to be producing that. This is going to have all of this react with this, and we're going to end up with all acetate. Or as I'm describing it above, all A minus. So that's not a buffer because we don't have enough HA there to react with any strong base if that were added. So at this point, if we added another drop of this, we're going to have CRPH spike upwards. So this is also wrong. And then B is our correct answer because we're reacting some of this with some of this, but we'll have some excess of this. So we're going to have 15 milliliters times 0.01 molar. Now you can do the math on this if you want. 15 milliliters is 0.015 liters, 0.01 molar. So you're going to end up with 0 0.0015 moles of HA. And then you're adding to that 0 0.001 moles of hydroxide. So what you're going to end up with is you're going to have an excess of 0 0.0005 moles of the weak acid acetic acid, and you're going to end up with 0 0.001 moles of its conjugate base acetate. That's your buffer, B would be your answer. Okay, another common question in the organic section is which of the following has an enantiomer? For enantiomer, you're looking for a carbon with four different things bonded to it. So a chiral center. So we're looking for things like this. Here we have a carbon, it's got an H bonded to it, a Br bonded to it, but this one has a CH2CH3 and a CH2CH3. So that's not going to be our answer because it has two things that are different, but then the final two are the same. So we only have three, so we kind of have this CH2CH3 here and a CH2CH3 here. So this is not it, but that looks really close to it. In fact, that's probably a good trap for them to get someone to pick that. The second one here, we've got a CH3 to a CH. Well, CH means we're going to have a double bond here, because otherwise this would be CH2. So then we have this, and then a CH2, CH3. So in this case, we do not have a single carbon that's bonded to four different things, so that would also not be the answer. Then we have CH3COOH, that's a carboxylic acid. So we're going to have COOH. This has three hydrogens. This has um, the two bonds to the oxygen, so that is not correct. And then our last one then is trending towards being the answer, but let's make sure. So here we have a CH3 bonded to a carbon, to a hydrogen, to a chlorine, and then we've bonded to a CH2CH3. So this is very similar to this first one, except it's not symmetrical in that it's not the third of five carbons in a carbon chain. So here we have the second of four, so we have a CH3 group here, CH2, CH3 there. So D would be our answer here. Okay, you can expect an electron configuration question or two, and they love to throw traps. They love to deal with the chromium and copper, and they also want you to know how to deal with the charge for electron configuration. So here we've got silver, and so all of these are the same until we get up to the 4p6. So if you look, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, and then things start to get different. So let's start with silver. In silver, if we write off the periodic table, we would have the 5s and the 4d. I guess I'll have a little more room there. So if we write off the periodic table, we would have 5s2, 4d9. But silver is one of those exceptions where there ends up being more repulsion between these two electrons than if we were to move one here. And so we end up with the lowest state as being 5s1, 4d10, for silver. So now we have a silver plus one ion, we're going to take away one electron. 
you're always going to be removing the S electrons before the D ones when you're forming these ions. So these are further away from the nucleus, and therefore they're going to be the ones that get taken. Now they fill first, but they actually fill in through the D orbitals and then get promoted to the S based on repulsions of the core electrons. So this is one of our exceptions, and then we have to be able to take away the electron. So the electron we're going to take away, we're going to take away the 5S1, which should leave us with just 4D10. So that would be this one here. So C would be our correct answer. Okay. Now, 5s2, 4d10, that's got too many electrons by 2. This has too many electrons. And then this one has too few electrons. So really, if we just counted the electrons, we could have come up with C. Uh, but that's how you would work through the entire thing. And you want to be prepared that chromium and copper in particular, but any of the elements underneath them are going to be in this exception. And then additionally, you want to know that if you have something like nickel, which is 4s2, 3d8, and then you form nickel 2 plus, that you're taking away these electrons, not those ones. They will ask that question. Okay, this question we have just a simple how many sigma, how many pi bonds. This one comes up a lot. What you have to know for this is you have to be able to work out what the organic structure looks like. So if we're doing CH3, let's draw the full structural formula for these. CH2. CHO. So a CHO like this means an aldehyde, usually. Okay. This one here, we've got a CH. It's weird to see a CH on the terminal end. That's going to mean that if you have a triple bond, bonded to a carbon, bonded to another carbon with two hydrogens, and then a CH3. Down here, we've got CH3, CH2, CH3. Last one we have ethanol, so we have CH3, and then we have our hydroxyl group. Okay, so the question says one pi bond, so it'd probably be smart to look at pi bonds first. So here we have one pi bond, so that's good. Here we have two pi bonds, not good. No pi bonds, and no pi bonds. So that would leave us with A, but let's double check. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plus one of these bonds is nine sigma bonds, and therefore P would be our answer, and this would be the one with nine sigma and one pi. Okay. Now, if I were working this through and I were under time frame, I would start by looking at the pi bond as long as I knew how to draw these structures. If I didn't really know how to draw them, I would start by drawing them out to kind of give myself a framework to say, I know these two are wrong, pretty sure this one's wrong, leading towards it. Okay. Another question that you can see a lot is the pH of solution changes by one or two or three. How much does this particular concentration change by? Now, changing from four to three is more acidic. So as we're moving down towards zero and even below that, we're becoming more acidic. So the H plus concentration should be increasing. It should not be decreasing. So we know that C and D are not correct. Let's go ahead and put that like that. So we're definitely. All right, so then the question is, how much does it go up by? Now, the pH scale is logarithmic, right? pH means the negative logarithm of the H plus concentration. And so, and so that means that every change in one of the pH is going to be a change of 10 on the concentration. So the H plus concentration will go up by 10. If the pH dropped another one, it would go up by 100, 10 times 10. Okay, and one more question. This is just, they give you a set of uh, voltage, uh, standard reduction potentials with the half reactions, and they ask you for which one is spontaneous or not spontaneous or something to that effect. So what you want to do for this one is you want to look and see whether the reactions match the ones as written or whether they're flipped. If they match as written, you write down the sign as written and the number. If they flip, then you're going to change the sign from positive to negative or negative to positive. You're going to add everything up. And if the voltage is positive, that means it'll be spontaneous and it'll happen. If the voltage is negative, that means that it's not spontaneous and it's not going to happen. Let's do some examples. So the silver here, we have this AG here, it's flipped. AG plus is flipped. Now the two is irrelevant because these are based off one molar concentrations. So what I do for this is I would take this and put it as a negative 0.8 volts. And then the zinc is as written. So that's going to be plus a negative 0.76. 
So I get negative 1.56 total. Not spontaneous, not my answer. Copper 2 plus is as written, so that's a plus 0.34. The zinc is flipped, so I'm going to flip the sign. So that comes out to be plus 1.1. That's good. That should happen. Copper 2 plus as written, so plus 0.34. Silver is reversed, so I'm going to switch the sign on that to negative 0.8, and that comes out to be a negative 0.46, not going to happen. And then zinc 2 plus, as written, negative 0.76. Copper reversed, negative 0.34, turns out to be negative 1.1, not going to happen. B is my answer. If I had to make an activity series out of these, this would be my least reactive metal, because I don't want to see that flipped followed by the copper, and then my zinc is the most reactive metal because this one turning from the metal into the cation is the most reactive one. 